So welcome, I see Professor Washington Okeo joining us. Please welcome Alfred Baido. We are excited to have you on board. Andrew, Jolene, Rita, Roland, Stephen, Vanessa, Alexis. If I haven't mentioned your name, just know we are excited you're here and we're happy to have you on board. So without much ado, there we go, cultivating an ethical culture in higher education institutions. I believe each of you represents an institution. As I said earlier, we're interested in the role of faculty and staff. Just once more, here we go and we are excited. Just to let you know, what is it that you should expect from us or what do we expect from you? Because as I said earlier, it's not all about just the me here, the moderator, but it's about all of us. So what to expect? Number one, definitely introductions. We'll try to take the shortest time possible. We'll have a poll question for you and we expect responses. We hope that will take us roughly 15 minutes. Then we're going to have a symposium where we'll hear from people who've been practicing what we are talking about. We have Dr. Uh, George Mugabe, Andrew Kibe, uh, and Dinah. So we'll have a time just to hear from them. They represent different institutions. George is the face of Rwanda, Andrew is the face of Kenya, and Diana is the face of Ghana. Then we'll have a session for reflective questions and also responses for 15 minutes. Then after that, just to delve and reflect further, we'll go into break away, breakout sessions for 20 minutes where you'll have one-on-one -on -one interaction moments with these people and you'll be able to share all that is going on in your institutions and what we need to do to make the situation better. Then to close the session, we'll have reflection and closing. Uh, where we'll report back what we have discussed in our breakout sessions. And that would, will be it for the day. So that's it. And um, uh, as, as we move on, I would um, make it very clear that uh, again, I'm repeating, it's all about you. So there's a poll already that is running and please uh, I would take that part. Uh, it's important we hear somebody's voice. Uh, the poll is running, so Gracie, you could uh, guide uh, participants on how they go about it. So over to you, Gracie. The question is, what are some specific ways you can prepare your students to make ethical choices? I hope, Gracie, you've posted that link on the chat forum so that they can easily access it, click on it and access it. So what are some specific ways you can prepare your students to make ethical choices. So that link, please just respond. Grace, I suggest you copy the link and post yes, it Yes, we the are screen. putting it there because I'm sharing my screen, it's a bit difficult to navigate that. Okay, okay, fine. No problem. Oh, it's already there. So there it is, please go to the chat forum and respond to that. I think it starts from students understanding what ethical choices are to begin with. Uh, because of different backgrounds and beliefs, examples are really helpful for students. So quite important, it's important for us to share examples because students would be able to learn uh, from that. So thank you so much for, thank you so much for sharing that. We really, really appreciate. So keep, keep sharing. I'll just select a few uh, of them that have been shared and read loud so that we can be able to, to hear that. But uh, we encourage each and everyone, make sure that you respond to that. Make sure you respond to that. Uh, let me pick on another one. Give them the confidence to speak out when they don't agree with something. I know that's usually very difficult, you know, but quite important that when they don't agree, agree with something, let's give them a chance to speak out. And again, another one, we engage our students in talk on integrity, honesty, and ethical choices. Excellent. That's another example that has been given out, engaging them uh, and giving them that chance even to air out their views, even when they don't agree with your point of view. Uh, and another one is saying, introduce a course in the curriculum that deals with ethics ethical dilemmas 
and how to resolve. You see that last third part, very important. It's not just a matter of having ethics in the curriculum, ethical dilemmas, but then how do they resolve these dilemmas when they face them? And then another one is saying, uh, I think it starts from uh, students understanding what ethical choices are to begin with, quite important because some of them might not know exactly what we mean. Then also another one response, um, have ethical doctrine and set goals to achieve the purpose. Have in place systems and policy for ethics. Have students agree and sign on to the system and policy. Set guidelines for students to follow with sanctions for wrongdoing. So with the system policy and guidelines, guidelines in place, that becomes very possible. The question is, do we have them in place? Do we have them in place, quite important. So that's it, um, we have read, quite uh, exciting, quite interesting. We really appreciate you for that. And uh, those yet to, to do that, please go ahead and share your thoughts, share your ideas with regard to the question that we, 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 we post here. If there could be someone just joining, the question is what are some specific ways, specific, specific ways you can prepare your students to make ethical choices. Because the reason we are here today is to deliberate on how we can help prepare our students to make ethical choices. So that's it. Just um, uh, let me check a few more we could be having. Uh, as I see, we still have a few minutes for that session. So thank you, thank you so much. I think Grace, we can move to the next slide. So uh, I would like just to hear a few people voice before I take us over to our, uh, the people today who are going to do, share with us their lived experiences. But there could be somebody who based on that question that we have just talked about, you feel like that you need to a view, I mean, speak out. We'd not want to lock you out. If there could be anyone would like to be heard with regard to this question you'd want to voice out, please just raise up your hand. Aha, okay. Yeah, it appears that all of us, we are fine uh, having what we've written down and not necessarily voicing what we have. So um, I take this opportunity now to, this is the session we've been looking for. Because most of us, uh, most of the times, it's easy to say that sometimes it's easy just to say these things. But when it comes to doing, you know, that part of it, doing it, it becomes a bit difficult. And that's why we have this common phrase that it's easier said than done. But we are here today to find out uh, from those who have lived, have practiced in their institutions what we are talking about today. And I have my colleague, uh, Dr. George Mugabe, as I said earlier, from Kigali. I have our sister from Ghana, Daina Baido, and Andrew Kibe from Kenya. In that order, each of them, you have five minutes roughly to make a presentation. Just share with us what experiences you have. So in that order, being a symposium, you each have equal number of uh, uh, time. I've said five minutes. So each of you will have five minutes. And I start off, I hand over first of all to Dr. George. Please, Dr. George, over to you. Uh, hi, everybody. And uh, thank you, thank you, thank you so much uh, for this wonderful opportunity. So my name is Dr. George Mugabe. I'm joining from Kepler College in Rwanda. And looking at the question, which is quite pertinent, um, that was posed. Um, I felt that it's important for me to share uh, some few. I, I, I don't want to claim that uh, uh, our system uh, is perfect 
And uh, given the, the dynamic nature of the environment we live in and how things normally change every time, I think the only thing we can say is to do the best we can uh, within that environment that we are at that particular time. And uh, during the reflections, uh, I asked myself, the role of faculty and staff in instilling uh, ethical values and facilitating uh, their learning process. Um, one could actually uh, delve into sharing some of the techniques, for example, on how we take uh, the lessons into the classrooms. Uh, and in most discussions, uh, you will hear, uh, this is something also we also do here, it's uh, around making sure that uh, all lessons that we have in corporate values, um, we have put uh, policies in place, uh, for example, um, student code of conduct, which kind of helps to, to steer uh, the, the values on the do's and the don'ts and some of the expectations that we want to see in uh, students' lives transformation. And as, uh, as we go into the classroom, we go now to expand more on uh, the pedagogy of uh, how we deliver uh, our lessons, particularly around the ethics, values, and uh, critical thinking in that. And uh, some of the things that have, have worked so far is the inclusion, for example, of case studies, um, ensuring that uh, students are sensitized around uh, different ethical frameworks, because sometimes we receive students at their very, 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 very early stages, and uh, they don't know exactly what to do and how to do. So it's our job to ensure that we show them that path and uh, allow them to grow within that. Um, ensuring that we foster uh, what normally in the literature is called Socratic uh, questioning and reasoning. Uh, this allows them a little bit to be more open into looking deeper into issues that they are facing. Um, guest speakers, um, which is something that I've always leveraged um, in my courses, uh, the ones that I normally teach, and kind of uh, allow students to relate uh, to partners or experts from the industry to give them real life examples of how different sometimes uh, most of us normally forget that uh, the way the campus is uh, compared to uh, the workplace, they are normally completely different. So it's our job to see that these two uh, environments uh, become one even before students uh, leave our campuses. Uh, there is also one thing that um, for me, I've always seen that students um, respond positively quite well is around the, uh, the use of student clubs platforms where uh, students become a little bit more freer, uh, particularly around uh, designing uh, learning, uh, learning processes that are more playful. For example, uh, one thing that we have done here is the role playing and uh, review of movies and literature where kind of uh, uh, engage students uh, together with staff within that club, where we look at books that have um, kind of studied uh, uh, most of uh, the proponents of ethics, uh, leaders who have been uh, lauded to be ethical leaders and allow students to role play and uh, kind of create a play and then analyze on uh, how, um, if at all they were ethical and go through that critical thinking process uh, in terms of really identifying. And through this, uh, students have uh, gone to, you know, their eyes have gone to be open uh, to kind of see, oh, okay, so th this is why or this is how. And this has actually helped to kind of open that door for them to really start walking that path. However, one thing that, um, and I think this is uh, quite important and we need to really, really um, stress on it. As much as we may have these wonderful strategies uh, to, to foster students' uh, learning processes around ethical values and critical thinking, uh, we have to always remember the first step should start from us. What do I mean by this? 
no matter how serious I am or how passionate I am in teaching ethics and values, if I'm not a person of values or a person of who values ethics, there is nothing I'll be able to achieve. So one thing that for me I'm always uh, maintain is to make sure that if I, I speak something, then I have to work that. I have to be that. So I have to be that role model because sometimes uh, it's very easy to look outside and then expect others to, to deliver while you are not really stating that case yourself. So as leaders, as um, uh, teachers here, instructors, whatever capacity that we are in, uh, we are at or working, uh, we have to make sure that whatever values, whatever lessons we want to instill in these young minds, we have to make sure that we believe so and we live so. So if it is values, then they should be also our values or not the other way around. So these are some of my reflections and I felt it's important for me uh, to share them today. And hopefully uh, if we continue to work collaboratively together and sharing all these best practices and learning from each other to build the systems, then I think uh, the impact we really want to create can be done so in the most sustainable and seamless manner. Thank you, Dr. Richman. Thank Dr. you, Rose. thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much. We appreciate that. Uh, more so, one very important thing that I have picked from your presentation that we have to walk the talk. It's not just about talking about ethics and it's like giving our students what they need to do, but ourselves, are we a reflection of what we are talking about? So thank you so much, Dr. George, for that. And now over to Madame Baido. Over to you, please. Thank you, Dr. Rosemary. Um, looking at faculty and staff in an institution like Ashesi University, we are the major stakeholders that instill ethics in the students. We are raising them, preparing them for the world of work. So if we are telling them to be ethical in whatever they do, we should also try to do the same so that they will have the good examples from us to emulate. In Ashesi here, we have learning goals, which include ethics and civic education that instills the culture of ethics among students. And we are saying that, or we are not saying, but then that is what we are doing. We are raising generations of ethically driven leaders for Africa. And with this, we encourage the students to take ethical actions, to do the right thing when no one is watching. And in order to achieve this, we have the faculty that teach them giving voice to value, which is a first year course that they go through when they first join at Jesse. We also have the honor code that they sign on after they have gone through the giving voice to value education and then they have accepted the rules of the honor code. So with the honor code, we have the academic integrity and then the social conduct. With academic integrity, we ensure that students do not teach, do not cheat during examinations. And they are responsible to themselves and others such that they can report whoever will cheat in examinations. We also ensure that whatever write-up they will have to present for grading, they have to submit through Tenetin to check plagiarism. And we have also the Ashesi Judicial Council that checks on plagiarism issues. With a social honor code, we guide students by respecting each other 
they should not use any offensive language or sarcastic statement against their colleagues. And we trade them against sexual harassment or misconduct. Bullying should never happen. And we have uh, policies and guidelines in place. First response team that supports any reporting issue and counseling team that talk to them in any issue that they may come across that may be a worry to them. And the Judicial Council try as much as possible to put disciplinary actions against any wrongdoing. For the library when I joined, Ashesi has a lost and found item, which when people find items that are misplaced, that they don't belong to them, they are supposed to return them. And the library is in charge of taking custody of those items for the rightful owners to pick them. So in all of this, we the faculty or staff as stakeholders of the Ashesi community play a role to make sure that we also live by what we preach to the students so that the students might, might resonate to follow what we preach, what we do, our good examples. The second question, do you want me to go on it or I should wait for another session? No, it's okay, it's just been, yeah, just, just tackle it. Okay, so the second question you asked is about um, the recommendation for the present training format for faculty and staff. Presently, there is an ongoing GVV Africa online training for faculty and staff, which we are encouraging every incoming or present faculty and staff to go through the training so that we will know um, what the ethics that Ashesi is preaching is all about. And in that case, there are cases that um, when you join, you will read. So all that you, what one has to do is to sign on to an online model, which is flexible and participatory. It is actually cases of um, good standing ethical leaders like Dr. Patrick Ewa, Dr. Nyaho Tamakro, and then Masa Neti. We have more cases from certain communities, individuals, our students, uh, alum who have gone out and they have faced issues, rare faces that we have that you can read and then learn from those cases. And on the model, you reflect on the cases that you read, you comment on what other people have written for their reflections, and then you complete the model within um, six weeks. It's a seven steps model, which um, at the fifth model, there is a live facilitation session. And then at the end, you are given a certificate for participating or you want to data of uh, the GVV Africa. So this is what is going on presently, and we encourage everyone to be part of it, so that in all Africa would um, actually embrace the ethics of leadership. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much, Dinah, for that insightful. And I would echo that you have again re reflected on or echoed what uh, Dr. Mugabe talked about. But one more important thing I have picked out from what you have talked about is the fact that we must be intentional. For example, you've stated how Aseshi is intentional in making sure that they raise ethically driven leaders for the continent of Africa. And so they put measures in place to make sure that this happened. And one thing that also really struck me is when you say 
mm, that making sure that you raise them to be able to do the right thing even when no one is watching. That's very powerful. Thank you so much. And now, so I take us to Andrew Kibe, Kenya. You know, Kenya is also represented here and I'm quite excited because I'm also Kenyan. But I'm reminding us, I see some of us have already started posting their queries, their questions on the public chat forum. That's really encouraged. So please, your comments, your queries, post them on the chat forum. And after this, I'll give each of our speakers a chance to be able to respond to these queries. So over to you now, Andrew Kibe from Kenya on what strat strategies work best in creating a supportive env environment that encourages open dialogues on ethical issues. So over to you, Andrew. Good afternoon, everybody. I hope you can hear me clearly. Yes, yes, I can hear you clearly. I hope everybody's clear, hearing you very, clearly as well. Very well, thank you. Uh, wonderful to be here with all of you. Uh, yes, I am Andrew Kibe Madenge from uh, Riara University. Uh, let me first say I'm not a, a faculty member. I am an administrative member at the university, uh, but have a uh, an interest in this area of ethics and uh, leadership. Uh, and the reason I joined uh, this particular track line is, uh, I know we are doing something in the academic sector. Uh, we are training our students uh, in the right manner. But I, I think it's also important to attack this uh, the problem that is worldwide from also a different angle that is not uh, academic. So that's why I thought uh, a person who is not in the administrative, uh, in the academic sector may also have an input. And I decided to join uh, this track line. So at Riara University, first and foremost, I could say we have uh, various uh, formal uh, arrangements to ensure that our students uh, are well prepared to act ethically in whatever they do. We have an honor code we sign when they are coming on board uh, the university during uh, matriculation ceremonies. Uh, we have the unit uh, ethics and culture that is uh, taught across board, whether you're coming in for your degree program, for your diploma program, or whatever program. Uh, and of course, there is uh, adequate information in the students' handbook, the academic uh, handbook, and even the staff uh, code of conduct. They all have uh, adequate information uh, to help uh, students uh, be able to navigate uh, the issue of ethics. But above this, uh, and that's why I thought it's important uh, for a different uh, approach to be employed and not matter to make that information uh, used or to employ that information in one's life. So for me, uh, the strategies that I see that uh, will work, again, our program is quite young. We just started the other day. So we are still in developmental stages. Uh, we are still trying and testing. Of course, we know what is working. We've listened to what Chelsea has and uh, what other people are doing, but we also are growing so that uh, it becomes a uh, participatory. It becomes uh, something that is uh, owned not by the administration or just the university, but the student's body become a part of growing with what we are doing and, uh, and, and working towards that. So perhaps what I could share quickly, one of the strategies that I saw will work for us is uh, uh, making it possible for peer-to-peer -peer, uh, accountability setups uh, where we can role play uh, and, and, and check on one another. Uh, after learning much, it's important also now to put it into practice so we can be able to bounce off thoughts and ideas, uh, not just bounce off thoughts and ideas, share practical experiences that we are encountering in our day-to-day -day lives. Uh, part of the approach also is to involve our faculty and staff uh, to share their personal journeys and experiences uh, with small groups of students 
student leaders. And for this case, we are starting with student leaders ourselves so that we can see if we can have an impact uh, amongst the students and perhaps that can cascade downwards to other students. Uh, so uh, staff who are so critical in uh, sharing their personal experiences because over the years they have been at workplaces, they have uh, faced situations. So sharing what they have been encountered and how they were able to weather through certain situations and circumstances will help now our students to begin to form a, a particular mindsets, uh, begin to form confidences in acting ethically. So that is one of the main things that I see that will work for us. The other thing is, uh, and which is very highly encouraged at the university, is that we have an open door policy uh, where anyone can approach any of the staffers and the students actually have access even to the highest office even to the vice chancellor's office, they are able to reach that office with any form of communication, uh, needing attention. Uh, so that gives them an opportunity perhaps to share if they face uh, particular situations that are untoward or unethical, uh, then they have a free, uh, free environment where they can share that information in confidence and then that can be acted on and perhaps they can be encouraged to continue sharing such. So we also hope to uh, venture into giving voice to values as an institution. As I said, our program is still young, so we are hoping to learn from uh, what is happening across uh, the entire collaborative network uh, and then be able to employ, perhaps we'll be able to employ better because what you have practiced, we might be able to do a little bit more because you have already tested some things. Uh, then finally, I think we also want to place little tips and remind us around campus, uh, creative in, uh, inspirational uh, communications that can help students, particularly when it comes to the uh, period that when we have uh, examinations, uh, it helps to have a few tips that can help students to be able to remember what they are supposed to stand by or, or, uh, or go by, what values they hold. And also something else that I'm working on is a, a sort of a, a, what we can call a, a community action. So perhaps in a classroom uh, setting where two or three or five or 10 students or 20 students uh, work towards uh, certain achievements in terms of uh, uh, doing things ethically and standing by ethical issues and then perhaps being rewarded for having uh, stood out uh, or perhaps uh, being rewarded for what they've done over a time. So I could say those are just some of the few insights after reflecting on what we have before us. Uh, I believe you're going to learn from each other as we progress. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Kipe, for that. Uh, enlightening us. I have realized that we have some questions posted on the chat forum. So before we go to the breakout rooms, I'll go get back to you, our speakers, just in the order how we started. I hope you've already checked the chat. So you've identified the questions that uh, you are directed to you or you feel uh, really you need to respond to. So I'm going to give each of you just a few minutes uh, each to respond to these issues that are raised. So let's start off uh, uh, your mic off, Dr. Mugabe, please, of Kepler. After that, we'll have uh, Dinah and then Andrew. So over to you, Dr. Mugabe. Uh, thank you, Dr. Rosemary. Yes, uh, there was a question that was directed to me uh, a bit earlier. I took some time to answer it in the chat. Um, but just to highlight, um, the question uh, was uh, asking um, on how institutions uh, can ensure the staff and faculty are developing those values. Uh, since um, we talked about the need for staff to also be held at higher standard and be role models. So maybe an experience that I can share is and I think this has been spoken across other teams. Um, one thing we do here is uh, 
uh, our staff uh, as they join uh, they uh, they sign a staff handbook. So basically, it's um, a staff uh, code of conduct which has uh, the do's and the don'ts uh, around ethics and values, um, uh, some expectations, uh, what is expected of me um, as a role model to students, uh, as well as other staff members. This becomes um, a foundation for uh, starting to transform um, how I need to conduct myself um, as long as uh, I'm with the company. Yes, uh, maybe there may be challenges for some, maybe others not, depending on the background. But this normally um, has become uh, one of the greatest tools uh, to kind of uh, start from somewhere. Now, the other strategy um, an institution can have is we are, we are humans at the end of the day. Uh, depending on what we do, sometimes it, it doesn't really matter. We find ourselves that we have forgotten certain things. We always, uh, we sleep here and there. So one thing uh, that we can always have within our systems is those refresher sessions. So how they are going to be formatted, it depends on the institution. But one thing that has always kind of worked very well uh, in kind of creating that impact that we're looking for is to make these sessions not too structural, if I may call it. and. Uh, they become a little bit more playful in a sense that um, staff can come, maybe also go through that process of uh, working through the same case studies that we have, sometimes we give to students. So if you're a staff, what could you have done? Or creating um, some roles uh, uh, with an interaction or a dilemma vis-a-vis uh, -vis a staff and a student and see how um, you know, different people can react to such a to such a scenario or case. So these are the, um, this process or this kind of approach has helped in kind of always kind of ensuring like me as George said, oh, okay, I had forgotten about this. And as in these sessions, uh, the scenarios can be created in a sense that they conflict uh, with uh, the, the code of conduct in a way that if uh, someone reacts differently from the code of conduct, then immediately they are reminded of some of those consequences. And those can be a good deterrent uh, for a staff to act in a manner that uh, is not befitting either a lecturer or a manager or whatever the case that may be. So this is also one other uh, uh, system that you can put in place. But one thing for me I've, I've enjoyed is uh, clubs, clubs that are, are hybrid, where normally we are used to seeing uh, student clubs where students come gather and uh, they interact and engage in whatever activity um, in line of in line with uh, whatever agenda that they have. Let's say ethics, leadership, um, whatever debate. Uh, for me, one thing uh, I've always kind of um, I've been interested in is the hybrid clubs where you find both students and staff come together and they come together within a certain subject. So in this sense, in this case, for example, ethics and values, where you have staff and students where they meet there as club members, not a staff, not a student, and they interact by uh, discussing some really, really critical ethical dilemmas, including a staff admitting, for example, uh, in front of students that they have lied. Because one thing we always see that as staff, uh, because I'm held at higher standard, uh, sometimes we end up uh, creating an image that is not really real in a sense. And we want to be seen in a certain way in front of, uh, in front of student eyes. And these sometimes, depending on the type of students we deal with, it may actually work for us or sometimes not work for us in the sense that students, you know, as you grow or as much as you get, you can actually really see when someone is really not being real. So depending on the structure of an institution, um, these clubs, um, if created very well, can provide that environment where, it, you know, those uh, positions, uh, status kind of goes away and we actually just meet as members of the club and we end up discussing 
just as the way I can discuss with a brother, with a sister, or with a friend, or with a colleague. And that way, through those honest discussions, uh, even students can really see that as much as uh, I'm way beyond uh, whatever stage that someone may want to place me compared to the student, at the end of the day, we are still humans. And human beings, uh, you know, we are subject to mistakes. And the students need to really see that. And we really need to humanize um, the, the, the making of mistakes, but ensure that we insist uh, Making a mistake is really not a mistake, but going through it again and again, then that's where the issue is. And students, we have to uh, we have to teach them that value, so that one it uh, it helps to build integrity. Integrity comes with someone being able to know that, uh, however much something bad that uh, I've done, if I come out with it without necessarily being pushed, that means I speak the truth. It helps me to build integrity within me. And that in itself, even though that I've made a mistake, is ethical, depending on how someone may actually look at it. So it is these kind of clubs uh, for me that actually kind of opened um, a little bit of doors here and there. And some students now being really, really uh, uh, open to immediately come and tell me and say, George, I'm really sorry, no excuses for what I've done. It's my mistake. I was distracted by A, B, C, D, but I promise you I'm going to do this and this and this. That tells me something about that person instead of someone making excuses uh, of the mistakes that they did. So it is through these uh, small systems that um, the institution can put in place and see how to sustain them. Then um, whatever values we want to instill in our students, then the can to take place in the most effective and efficient manner. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Mugabe, for that. Um, I'm reminding us that we're still going to have even more personalizations with these speakers in our breakout rooms. But before we go there, I believe that Dinah and Andrew also need to respond. I'll ask them to take the shortest time possible. But as they do, I'm also asking you to do some reflection. And the question is, what is the one thing you have picked from these shared experiences that you'd wish to act on? And I'm requesting you post that on the chat forum. What first step do you need to take for this to work out for you? Please just post on the public chat forum as Dinah and Kibe respond to your questions, taking the shortest time possible. Over to you, Dinah. Dr. Rosemary, thank you. I saw a question here that says, um, does the Judicial Council adjudicate on cases against staff members too? So for staff and faculty, we have policies put in place by the Human Resources Department. And it guides the way we go about doing things with um, students and our colleagues. So there are disciplinary actions to that go with it. And um, we have a handbook when you are employed, you are given the handbook which you read to know about all these things. When there is an issue, it is the human resources department that handles it. Occasionally they post uh, portions from the handbook through our emails as a reminder to people so that we we'll be on our guide. I also saw um, a question on and uh, share how you measure how successful your initiative are. How do you know students are becoming more ethical? So um, because we have put these measures in place, especially in terms of theft and people finding things that um, do not belong to them and they turn into the library. I can say that this is working a lot for us internally because we've been receiving a lot of stuff, mobile phones, laptops, a lot of valuable items that comes to us, even money that 
we have to announce sometimes if we know the owner. If we don't know the owner, the owner might come to ask and then they'll find it. We have a box that they can place other items that people come, they find what they have misplaced and they, they take it. So for this, I would say that the ethics actually is working perfectly because I used to tell people that um, the way you work with your phones, at your back pocket, you can't do this thing in town because the next moment your phone will no longer belong to you. So it's only Ashesi or the campus that people um, do. And then secondly, to in terms of um, our alum, there is a follow up on them on what um, ethical issues they face when they go out. And we have had cases where our students have actually stand up for their values, refuse issues or things that pertain to, um, that are against their ethics. And so for some of them, they have even accepted even to quit from the job if things went on that they don't actually agree with. There is another question. Um, so what is the impact on whistleblowing? So actually, if a student reports a colleague, the um, corporate will be brought to book, judicial counsel will sit on the case and then actually judge to know the right and the wrong. So before, um, an issue would even come up. There are a lot of sensitization that has gone on with whoever fall victim to unethical behavior. And the whistleblower name will not be mentioned until everything is successful. And it doesn't bring actually any relationship problem among them because um, whoever finds him or herself a victim knows that he or she did not do the right thing, right? So um, that is actually um, going well over here. Great. Um, I'm looking, there is no any other question for me. So I think that is it. I was looking through the questions. Thank you so much, Diana. And You're just welcome. before I hand us over to Andrew, I'm reminding us, what is the one thing you have picked from these shared experiences that you'd wish to act on? What first step do you need to take for this to work out for you? Please post that on our public or chat forum. Over to you, Andrew. Right, I have uh, seen a question. Uh, to share the manual that I'm hoping to develop to promote ethical awareness at the at Riara University, what will it contain? So first of all, uh, this manual uh, want to be able to put in there uh, possible areas of conflict. Now you realize when students uh, join campus and even along their journey of learning, uh, they are learners, so there's a lot they may not be able to know uh, that could uh, be potential areas of conflict or result in a, an ethical action. Of course, there is what is generally known to be maybe perhaps morally wrong to do, but uh, the idea here is to have a, a bit more detail of areas of conflict, especially when they think about uh, their work life later uh, and just general interaction with human beings wherever they are. So it will have uh, areas of possible conflict. A uh, few suggestions of what action one can take uh, because it's important to equip them with information that they can actually use uh, so that they can try out that because at the end of the day, that's where our role modeling will start from. Our role playing will start from then uh, when it comes to actual real life activity, one may remember this is the action I can take uh, if I face this kind of possible situation. 
The other thing, uh, because it's a university manual, it will of course have a, the, the offices responsible to handle situations that come around uh, students uh, and how they can go about contacting such people, even being, uh, even becoming, uh, when they become uh, whistleblowers for certain situations, uh, then how they will be handled. Another thing that I want to put in there is the reward that one would uh, earn uh, over time, perhaps badges, maybe perhaps, you know, uh, a star student, the last one year, the last four years, you know, perform the following. And uh, so they graduated with extra honors because of one, two, three, four. Uh, and then also in it, I want to put in a penalty mechanism uh, but perhaps a graduated penalty mechanism where maybe there's a level one, there's a level two, there's a level three that is the highest level uh, and what would be the penalty based on that. But inside that penalty mechanism, there is a learning process put in it so that uh, if perhaps a student was caught in a, a class cheating, then they are made to go through a particular program for the next one or two semesters so that we use the the problem that they that the, the, the problem that took place to become a learning place you know uh, when you look at uh, life uh, everything that we face the challenges that we face uh, they are the ones we again turn around to become uh, opportunities for learning and developing you know like in kenya uh, now we have mpesa which uh, helps us to send money but in the first place it was a problem because we could not send money as fast as we wanted to now we found a solution so we will use the problems that we have to create certain learning uh, modes so that now a person learns from their action and at the end of the day can be able to develop uh, something i think i will uh, stop it there there is more but i'll continue to share as we progress thank you Thank you so much. You're going to have an opportunity to do exactly that because we are getting into our breakout rooms in a few minutes time. So just uh, be on standby, check when you get that invite, join. And as you do that, I'm reminding you again, as you wait to get to that session, what is the one thing, just one thing that you have picked from the shared experiences. And you've not just picked, but you'd wish to act on. And then what first step do you need to take for this to work out for you? So that's just a moment of reflection. Uh, join your breakout room so that you can continue deliberating on some of these issues we are raising. So uh, it's ready. If you check to the top left of your screen, uh, just click on it and join our room. Well, welcome back, everyone. That was quite exciting. I had the privilege of it dropping. You know, I spoke from one group to another group. And every time I would be in one room, I just don't feel like leaving because they were deliberating on matters very pertinent. So uh, we're going to give each group one minute, 90 seconds per group, just to report back to us what uh, they have deliberated on and what they've come up with. So uh, we'll start just the way we had our order, starting with uh, Dr. Gabe, followed by Dinah, and then Andrew. Each team has strictly 90 seconds. So it's not a must you be the one reporting, you could ask the representative from your group to do that. So over, over to you, Dr. Mugabe, please, your group. Okay, so we, we have Rita to present on behalf of our group. Thank you very much, Auntie Dinah. Um, um, please, can you all see my screen? Yes, we can see. Okay, so for our group, we started with the reflection on the um, institutional context. So we had um, different institutions in the group. So each person shared about how um, ethics or reflected on the ethical context in their institution. So some of the key things we noted was with regard to the code of conduct. So some um, faculties mentioned that 
code of conduct do exist in their institutions, but they are not published. And also there are weak systems when it comes to orienting new employees in their institutions. And also the fact that institutions teach about ethics and um, integrity, but there's a, a mismatch between what is taught and what is actually practiced or the culture that exists in the institution. And also, um, through the reflection, we realized that the promotion of ethical values um, is more enhanced from the Anglo when it comes to Anglophone countries than the um, Francophone countries. That was one of the experiences shared by one of the faculty members on the call as well. Um, then in one institution, there's no specifically designed courses um, that are targeted as students or faculty to promote ethical values. And um, in another institution, there are communication snippets on code of conduct that are shared regularly to reinforce um, the code of ethics that already exists for um, 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 employees to actually um, be ethical. Then um, there are also initiatives such as speaker series or speaker sessions communities of practice or GBV Africa courses um, that institutions across um, the collaborative. So this experience was shared from the education collaborative's perspective to instill these values across the institutions who take the courses or who join speaker series as such or participate in communities of practice. What are the plans that um, the faculty in our group are planning to take to promote ethical culture and leadership. Um, they mentioned that there's a need to have a clear guidance, in, guidance um, or guidelines in terms of policies that clearly define what the ethics or code of value should be on the campus. There's also the need for institutions or workplaces to have a safe space where people can freely voice out their values and not be afraid when they are voicing out those values. And there's the need to have a very good code of conduct that really spells out everything explicitly. And um, there was an emphasis on the need for um, the institutions to write out the code of conduct and have students or staff and faculty sign that code of conduct. Um, another from another institution's perspective, they plan on using clubs to propagate the values of ethics and also work with, um, there's um, another institution that is working on developing an institutional program where students and I think faculty will be taking that um, ethical leadership course um, as they come into the school to reinforce their ethical values. And one other institution mentions the need to reorient staff um, regularly on the ethics and code of conduct to ensure that the, the staff sign on to the code of conduct and empower uh, uh, the counseling units to provide sensitization on the, on the code of conduct regularly. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rita. Thank you so much, Rita and that team, we really appreciate. So uh, we are just coming to the end of this session, unless uh, Andrew's team, there's something that you need to share, you can share in a few seconds. All right, uh, I think ours will be a quick one. Uh, what we came up with, I will not select someone because of the time, uh, but uh, just in a highlight, key thing, uh, the leaders in the institution must be a part of the process or the program. Uh, so it will need to start from the leadership of an institution. Then another very important aspect is that students must be involved. Inclusiveness in the students is extremely important. If a program can be developed with their input, uh, then they, it, 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 it gets the buy-in from the students and that makes it possible for them to run with it and, and, and you know, be able to to, to work with it. And then the other aspect that we picked up uh, is uh, about a measurement, which had actually been mentioned earlier. It's critical to develop some tools that will help us to measure what we are doing so that in the course of time, you can be able to know whether we are progressing, whether we need to make amendments uh, or how we need to, 
to move forward. Then another aspect that uh, is important for institutions to uh, identify or set up the goal that they want to achieve as an institution. So that everybody buys or focuses on attaining that goal together. Uh, yes, and I think I, I will leave it at that. There are a few more points, but I think those are the most outstanding that I could talk about from our group. So thank you very much. Thank you. As we come to the end of this session, one thing that has stood out that I will just capture, speak it out, and then we prepare to take the photo to close. A university culture must be committed to ethics. I'm not just committed, but also comply. So compliance at its core is very important. Why? Because it's only when we do that, you know, it, it, it reflects what we've already talked about, that it's about the doing part of it. It's not just preaching or talking about it, but whatever we, we say, you know, it has to reflect what we do. So the culture cannot be rhetoric or just preached, but must be practiced, role modeled and put into action from leadership all the way to the students, not just expecting the students and we are not taking the lead. Thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate and now it's time for us to take photos. So please, we really appreciate if you can have your camera on and smile the style you do it to your place so that here in Kenya, we normally ask people to say Mbwashe, Mbwashe, Mbwashe. I don't know what you do your end, but whatever it is that will make you smile, please do it and have your camera on for that photo. Hello everybody. So on the count of three, we will take a picture. We'll take two sets of pictures. So one, two, three, picture time. Yeah. There's an evaluation link in the comments. Please take some time to provide us with what you think about the session. It's very important that we take your feedback to make sure that these sessions are very effective. Um, I have enjoyed today's session, so please take some time to fill it out before you leave, because once you leave, it will be very hard to fill it. Um, also, we have a session um, Ethics and Leadership Community of Practice coming October 26th. Since you are very interested in ethics and leadership, um, Andrew Ma Mr. Andrew Matenge from Viara, who you've seen here, will be leading the session and it will be going in depth into his project and what he's been working on. And you get the opportunity to ask all your questions. Once again, thank you um, and spend some time to fill the evaluation. It should take just about a minute. Thank you.